Good, so let's continue now. And um, now finally we can start uh, doing probably the, the most interesting part of this uh, short uh, practical course. Let's do something in practice with the circuit. Um, so let's try to to have it here. Okay, so I go back uh, to the schematic diagram. Okay. So let's try to quickly verify the circuit at least a little bit. And then uh, we have to program Arduino and to understand uh, how to use this thing. Okay, so here we have uh, our um, TL084 microchip, so the quadruple op amp. We said that here we have the notch, so this pin should be the pin number one this one, one, then two, three, four, five, seven. Then we count it like this, eight till 14, the, the last one here at this side. So uh, we said that uh, in the real circuit, we don't have those two resistors, uh, which are there only for purpose of uh, um, not making the simulation uh, to get crazy with these infinitive numbers. Then uh, uh, those two capacitors, uh, let's uh, concentrate on them. So they are uh, uh, polarized capacitors uh, and they are connected back to back like this. This is a popular solution in order to transform a polarized capacitor into a non-polarized capacitor you connect them back to back like this. So this is why we did it. And we had to use this polarized capacitor because we we have this very big value, 100 microfarads, which is big for a capacitor. And we had no other alternatives because there are no unpolarized capacitors with this such big capacitance. This big capacitance is needed in according to those two R1 and R2 resistors in order to produce the beta transfer function with a cutoff frequency which is uh, uh, good in order to cut off uh, the 50 Hz noise. So basically those values are setting the <coughs> cutoff frequency of this beta and therefore 1 over beta filter implemented by uh, the the two input stage uh, high gain amplifiers here. Okay, so um, pin number. Hello, yes. You. Uh, there is one student who wants you to add him in the class. Excuse me, could you please repeat the question? Uh, there is one student, Lorenzo. Uh, uh, okay, I see, I see. Thanks. Admit. Lorenzo is admitted. So welcome Lorenzo. Okay, so let's uh, uh, let's continue from here. So now let's concentrate on pin number fourteen and pin number one. So number one and number fourteen. Uh, of course, uh, a different layout of the circuit is possible because uh, I can use uh, whatever amplifier the way I want. They are all the same. But uh, I chose this thing because of reasons of routing. So this layout is convenient in order to mount the circuit on this small breadboard. Otherwise, uh, if you use another part, uh, A, B, C or D of this microchip, then uh, you, you might have a cumbersome uh, wiring uh, difficult to, to connect uh, each part uh, because this breadboard is pretty small. So it is always a good idea when you design a circuit, I mean a practical circuit, to have the schematic according to what will be the layout. And you have 
to take into account the data sheet of the components for this. Uh, so those things here are drawing, so you can connect them uh, easily by drawing lines, but in real life it's not like this. We have physical constraints. So one and 14 we said, okay, so the one is connect one is connected uh, to number two by means of a resistor. So and here we have this resistor here. So there is this red little bridge that goes to one side of this resistor and the other one is connected to pin number two. So this resistor here, the one that I'm touching is a 10 kilo ohm resistor, is the R2. So similarly, uh, sorry, uh, let, let's, um, yes, similarly, the 14 should be connected to the 13 by means of R1. And uh, here we have the pin number 14. There is this orange bridge. Then this orange bridge is connected to this resistor here, which goes to this pin here, which is connected to the 13. So 14 to 13 through R1, and we have it. Then from pin number 13 and from pin number 2, so 13 and 2, there is a capacitor C1 and C2 that goes on R1 and R2, and we have it here. So here is the 14, so sorry, 13, and here is the number 2. We have the capacitor, it goes with this bridge that connects together the two minus of the capacitors. So those resistors, again, are not present. And then the other side goes to the 13 pin of the operational amplifier TL084. And that's done. Then uh, the input is applied at the pin 12 and 3. So here we have number 3. The breadboard connects it with this column of holes to this black, uh, sorry, um, blue uh, bridge that goes here. Then again, it's connected like this to the yellow and this goes on the brown wire. So two is the brown wire, which is our reference. Then the 12 is here. This one, it goes with this other blue wire that goes here and Thanks to the breadboard, it's connected to the red wire. So that is the signal, what we call the signal. And this is the input stage. Okay, so uh, let's continue. Then we have this second part of the circuit, the differential amplifier. So it's made of uh, four resistors, 10 kilo ohms each. So from the 14, we have to have a resistor that goes at nine. So 14 is this thing. And uh, the resistor that goes to, to the nine is this one. So it goes here and then down to the pin number nine this okay and uh, then we have r4 from pin 1 to pin number 10 so where is it it's taking a long route so pin number 1 okay here there is this small red bridge that connects this uh, orange bridge 
then it goes here and the other side of the resistor so this one is connected to pin number 10 so 7 8 9 and 10 here it is okay then from 9 to 8 uh, we have R5 so from 9 8 9 this is 8 sorry this here it goes to the 8 it's this resistor that goes here to this yellow bridge and then back here so from 8 through the bridge to the resistor to the pin number 9 okay and then uh, we have another resistor that goes uh, from pin number 10 to the virtual ground so let's find pin number 10 pin number 10 is 8 9 and 10 is this one and then the resistor we are looking for is this one this one here that goes from pin number 10 into this hole then there is the breadboard connection the yellow bridge the orange bridge and then let's see this last part of the circuit so the virtual ground it's an operation amplified in the so-called buffer configuration so it's a non-inverting amplifier with gain one the feedback network is just a, a short circuit between the 7 and the 6 which is a resistance having value 0 and a resistor from the 6 to the true ground having value infinitive so the gain of this uh, non-inverting amplifier we have seen during the course was uh, G equals 1 plus R feedback versus uh, divided uh, the resistance that goes to ground so we have 1 plus 0 divided infinitive which is 0 and 1 plus 0 is 1 so the gain of this thing is 1 and this bridge between 6 and 7 is this little bridge here and then uh, what we have uh, is that uh, this very same connection is connected to that point of ground but also with this blue bridge and then passing through the green one and to this orange one is to is connected to the black wire so we have that the black is our ground the ground the brown is our reference and the red is what we call the signal electrode and last but not least there is this trimmer which is used uh, in order to set the 2.5 volt here that we need for um, the virtual ground uh, one we discussed uh, last time so this trimmer has to be trimmed half the way so this knob you see there is a, um, an arrow here uh, I don't know if it is possible to see it yeah, maybe like this so this thing is uh, telling the direction of the slider so if you rotate the knob it should be put half half of the way so this arrow should be kind of vertical but it depends also the way you mounted uh, this thing so you have to rotate it one way the other way around and to put it uh, let's say half the way the way this is important for the uh, for setting the proper 2.5 volts uh, here okay so this trimmer is connected this way now let's disconnect it for a moment so it was connected uh, here here and here the two extremes are those two extreme contacts the slider is the one on the middle so one extreme contact goes to this line which is the minus black wire that goes uh, on uh, the ground uh, of Arduino 
the other extreme was here connected to this little green wire that goes uh, uh, with this yellow wire here and this is plus 5 volts in Arduino and then uh, uh, there is also this uh, sorry the central pin is here and then with this bridge it goes here and it goes on pin number 5 which is this point in the schematic then we have uh, other two connections which is the minus VCC of the operational amplifier and according to the schematic diagram <coughs> minus VCC is on pin 11 this V capital V minus so 11 is here 8 9 10 11 in the middle is this yellow bridge here that goes on this line minus VCC and the, the plus is on pin number 4 so as it says here this is the positive supply of the microchip that goes here together with the yellow together with the plus 5 volt and the last connection is this long red wire which is the output of our amplifier which is uh, this one the output of the differential stage the pin number eight so eight this one is connected here and this thing goes all the way around to one of the analog inputs of the arduino and specifically to the input a0 Okay, so we mounted our circuit. So on the other side we have the crocodiles, the alligator clamps. Now, before I forget, I put the trimmer back on it, otherwise nothing works. And now, um, before we turn on the circuit we need to uh, program the Arduino actually we need to turn it on to program the Arduino so the Arduino is self-powered via the USB so now I connect the USB so you see Arduino starts blinking some LEDs then they are turned on so this is a status LED and this is the LED indicating the power is on. So one other thing we need to uh, pay attention is uh, uh, the components. So you see that the components uh, are not completely stable on the breadboard. So this is not a real circuit like a PCB where the components are completely uh, solid so I mean you can you can't move them but here you can move them so it might be that if you move them too much uh, you create a short circuits uh, that are not uh, wanted so try to carefully put the components in a way that they don't touch each other I mean if the body touches is not a problem but if the terminal touches yes because we can create and want the short circuits so this circuit is safe it's a very low power very low voltage so if you create a short circuit nothing will explode you will very probably uh, don't damage anything because uh, the, all those circuits are a little bit tolerant to this short circuit so you're safe don't don't worry if you, something touches something else but we have to pay attention to this in order to have the amplifier working as expected so now i put the circuit here I, and i go to the arduino so let me iconize this i minimize it so now we have to go here to the folder where you downloaded uh, the 
sources uh, from the GitHub uh, page. You go here, then you have Arduino. Okay, Arduino. There are a couple of uh, examples, but let's take this one, the bi amplifier. So the pictures, and now we click double click bio amplifier dot eno. Okay. So are you there? Are you all into this uh, Arduino software? Yes. Okay, good. So let's yes. so let's try to understand uh, a little bit uh, of this code. moment okay well so if you know something uh, about Arduino Arduino is um, is done this way there are two mm, let's say fundamental functions so one is called void setup and the other one is called void loop which is here ah sorry i, I want to scroll i have to scroll it like this okay loop <coughs> so the setup function is something is code that is run only when you turn on the Arduino once, then it jumps to the loop. So here this program is a little bit particular because uh, what is implemented here is a very fast ADC conversion. So it's an ADC conversion that you can't uh, run so fast if you use uh, the analog read function which is provided by Arduino. This conversion is fast because we need uh, to comply with the uh, Shannon theorem uh, in order to correctly acquire uh, the signals uh, of interest uh, and also for another reason because we have to transmit those uh, acquired data to another program which is the let's say the client part uh, on the processing uh, that will read those data and display and also save uh, on the disk as a file so the purpose of this program is uh, at uh, one side to uh, acquire the data but also to transmit the data and this is quite demanding for uh, such a small uh, cpu like uh, the at mega microchip uh, this uh, the microcontroller uh, which is uh, used in the Arduino board so this program is just uh, on the edge of being able of doing what it is doing uh, from the computational point of view okay so let's have a look of it there are a lot of uh, technical things that goes uh, beyond the the scope of this uh, presentation but let's try to comment it so on the setup there is this block ADC so it is doing something in order to adjust some internal things uh, internal to the uh, microcontroller that uh, uh, allows the analog to digital converter to work the way we want so it is setting some uh, variables which corresponds uh, to internal pins uh, internal connection let's say internal registers of the microcontroller in order to uh, set the clock frequency and uh, and the analog conversion so you see here we can set the sampling rate 
and the sampling rate is our delta time uh, after which we take a sample. If you read the, the manual of this microcontroller, it tells you that uh, the sampling rate of the ADC, ADC is set according to this formula and it takes uh, 13 clock cycles so the clock uh, is uh, if you remember the microprocessor uh, paradigm uh, is set by the frequency of uh, an oscillator which uh, uh, tells uh, how the instruction is uh, passing the program counter is moving from one instruction to another one and so we need to set a couple of uh, things uh, like this internal register and we need to s to tell the program that uh, we have uh, our input connected to the input uh, A0 and uh, uh, this is done by setting those internal registers then another thing that we can do and we do is to set a sort uh, uh, what, what is called uh, um, prescalers. So this thing is uh, um, a sort. Uh, uh, yes. I'm sorry. I think we we are having a, a problem with one of the Arduinos. Okay. Basically, when I plug the cable, if the light is turned on, but then it goes off. Okay, but this might be because uh, you haven't programmed it yet. So uh, le let's try to program it and see what happens. So um, if you agree, let me quickly uh, conclude this introduction of the code and then we try to program it. And then if uh, the problem is persistent, we try to, to debug uh, your uh, your pro problem. Is, is that okay? Okay. Okay, thanks. So we set the prescaler in order to uh, set the sampling rate. Those things are a little bit obscure, but uh, let's say it's something that you have to do according to the data sheet of uh, uh, the microchip okay uh, <clears throat> then this is something that uh, i put there but we will not use it is the pwm modulator so pwm means pulse width modulation it's a square wave that can be generated and uh, this square wave now is generated on pin number three and it will be generated with uh, a, a so-called duty cycle which is the ratio between uh, uh, the time the signal of a square wave is high versus the total time of the period of the signal and this duty cycle is modulated according to uh, in my original version of this uh, uh, code to the output of uh, uh, to the acquired output let's say to the acquire to the input uh, we acquire from the from the um, uh, analog input and this was uh, in order Sorry to, to interrupt you yes uh, my problem here is that it's that serial port not selected. I don't know how to. Uh, excuse me. What is not selected then? Serial port not selected. Ah, okay, okay. We 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 will get there. We will get there. Don't don't worry. Okay. So. Um, yes. So this is uh, in order. This was a uh, user the. This PWM in order to create a, a, a square wave modulated signal that was uh, uh, applied to a small loudspeaker that we have uh, 
in our uh, uh, kit, but uh, we will not use it because uh, we don't have enough uh, room uh, in the in the breadboard in order to connect all those things. Um, so let's say that this piece of code now is there, but uh, it's uh, it's dead. Let's say we we'll not use it. Okay, uh, then. Um, uh, let's finish this thing. So um, this part uh, is a, a, an interrupt uh, function. So it's a function which is called uh, self-called, let's say, internally from uh, the Arduino microprocessor. Every time uh, the analog to digital uh, converter has done its conversion, and once the value is here and is put in the variable x, then this function serial dot write x will write it as a byte. So an eight bit value byte. So eight bit of data through the serial port to the computer. So this is the reason for which the loop function is not doing anything because all the the trick is done by this uh, ISR ADC vector interrupt. So the interrupt functions are functions that are called when something uh, triggers them. In this case, uh, the ADC converter automatically stop the execution of the Arduino loop, which uh, was doing nothing <laughs> actually and it jumps there in order to execute that interrupt function and then it goes back to what it was doing but it was doing nothing so basically this program is very fast it's a very fast loop where the adc is uh, continuously acquiring data uh, at uh, uh, a data rate uh, according to what we set on the prescaler and whatever and continuously output the data through the serial port and here we have last in this program a serial event function which is another sort of interrupt function which is called every time the serial port is activated in this case the serial port is activated by the processing client software that we will use in a moment because uh, uh, in this uh, virtual oscilloscope that we will have on the screen, uh, we have the possibility of changing the sampling rate uh, according to a couple of buttons that we can uh, uh, click uh, on the processing application. And so we can experience the data acquisition at different data rates. And so when we do this, the serial port of Arduino will be activated by but the other way around so now it's not writing data Arduino but it's reading data so whenever we write from processing to Arduino by clicking the button Arduino will receive something the serial event function will be invoked it will read what it will read so and there are three things that, that this function can read sorry let me make it smaller like this for a moment. So the three things that uh, I put in the program that the Arduino can get from processing are the value one, two and three corresponding to the button one, two and three. And uh, if I press one button, I will do something on this internal register in order to set uh, the data rate uh, to uh, a certain value I want uh, and to another one and to another one corresponding to a sampling rate uh, of 38.5 kilohertz or 19.2 kilohertz or 9.6 kilohertz. So this is the part of the code that changes the data rate in Arduino. So Arduino, listen, from the serial port uh, for having a one, a two, or a three, according to the button, it sets the data rates, and once the data rate is setting, it continuously uh, waits for the ADC to acquire the data, and it immediately sends it back 
now I did something bad <laughs> edit undo let me let me close this because <laughs> now okay now other because with the mouse here on the iPad it's difficult okay let me reopen it okay sorry so uh, and then uh, as soon as we have uh, this um, uh, this thing it will write it to our processing uh, program okay now sorry for this long uh, um, thing now so uh, we said that we had problems uh, with the serial port so one thing that we can do is to go here to this tools menu we need to verify that the board is selected as an arduino uno and the port should be the ones the, the one where we have the arduino uh, uno connected so um, it might be that you have this arduino uno so and then you take the port uh, you have here or um, for if for some reasons it's not clear where which is one is the port of uh, where the arduino is connected you can just uh, uh, go uh, here and type uh, uh, device manager on windows because on mac and on linux this thing is not present it's different a device manager okay let's try to do this at least on windows and uh, here then you have this window that is telling you all devices attached to your computer all hardware devices then you go to ports you expand this and then you discover which is the port number of your arduino so if you disconnect it this port will disappear and so you know by difference which is which one so we here we have com1 6 and 7 and so for sure when i connect this in my case the arduino is com3 okay so try to verify that you have uh, uh, the arduino board as arduino uno and the com port corresponding to the com port of um, of the arduino you have on your pc uh, so those numbers are not uh, uh, unique so you have to to check what you have on your pc once you have done this you can click uh, the verify button that will uh, compile the program this is a c program c code also c plus plus so the program is need to be compiled in order to be transformed into microcode assembly that then will be sent to the arduino by pressing upload if you do upload it will automatically also compile it so click this button in order to have uh, the program to be transferred uh, on the arduino are we all at this stage now Do you all program uh, the Arduino or you you are still experiencing some uh, issues? Yes, I think we are all in this stage. Okay, great. Okay, so if now we are at this stage. Uh, let's do a verification so you can quit this arduino or just uh, minimize it 
then if you go here in the folder where you install the, the github uh, resources you go to the processing there is this <coughs> subfolder serial plotter and uh, there is this serial plotter dot PDE which is the program we need so you double click it and it will open processing okay